Ahoy there, trader, and welcome back. This is the Anti Investor Swing Trading Podcast. So let's talk about the five rules to create and produce a production line trading for your trading success. Now, one of the biggest challenges for all new traders is being consistent with their trading. And often they interject too much discretion into their trading only to have it break their strategy, create biases, and basically throw their returns off course. So in this week's show, we're going to break down some critical rules that you need to have in your trading plan to create a true production line trading process that eliminates emotion and allows you to generate those predictable, consistent returns. Hello and welcome to the anti Investor Swing Trading Podcast, where we talk about swing trading stocks, stock options, index futures, and maybe some day trading opportunities along the way. Now, my goal is to give you the right tools, the correct rules, software to assist you, a community to support you, and if you'll allow me to be a mentor to show you the way so that you get real results in the fastest and smartest possible way. So five rules for a production line process, and that's my way or a fancy way of saying rule-based trading. Another way of saying it is an algorithm. Now, what I don't mean when I say this, is a vague one-liner that can be interpreted in a dozen different ways. Define everything so that you have a series of yes-no rules. This is what I did in my own trading. And a lot of the time it was, how do I not experience that again? So you create a rule for it and then you start to define things in a lot more detail. And when you do get specific enough with these definitions, any decision can be turned into a closed loop question. And what this does is it can turn traditionally discretionary trading decisions into a mechanical choice and it makes it repeatable and replicatable by, well, quite literally anyone. So why use a production line process? I mean, I want to know the who, the what, the when, the whys, the wherefores. That's what I want to know. I want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it and why I'm doing it. I don't want any ambiguity. I hate second guessing myself, that uncertainty that did I do the right thing? I want to know with absolute certainty and clarity that I'm following my strategy to the letter. So it has to be a series of yes, no questions. Has this happened? If yes, move to the next one. If yes, move to the next one. And that means that I can repeat and replicate the same decisions today, tomorrow, next week, next month, so that I have the consistency in my own trading. Now, as a byproduct of this, that means that many of my traders are able to replicate similar results for themselves. So how do you go about setting up your production line trading process? Go beyond the, the headline uh, name, the, the, the BTFD, the buy the dip, or whatever it is the process that you're following. Buy value, buy stocks at a discount, buy the thing at a discount. What on earth does that mean? More specifically, what does it mean to you? How do you do it? I can tell you how I do it, and hopefully that can give you some insight as to how you can create a production line process for yourself. And obviously the first stage in the production line is to determine what you're going to do, when you're going to do it, and how you're going to accomplish it. Now, the more defined that you get and the specific you get, then it means that it becomes repeatable and replicatable. And again, keep going and keep adding definition until you get everything explained and defined to your liking and keep going and keep going and keep going. And what you'll end up with is, well, let's use another analogy. Like a pilot will essentially have a pre-flight checklist to make sure that everything is in the green before takeoff. A trader will have a pre-trade checklist. And again, I keep referring to what I do as a production, like a factory. I've got all the raw materials, all the knowledge, all the, the things that I've learned over the years and put them into that raw materials bucket. I'm going to pull them out one at a time with a series of questions to interpret what I'm seeing in the charts so that I can move my decisions along this production like in a, in a factory. All those decisions chug along that decision conveyor belt until it's either popped into the recycling bin because I hit a no in my answer on one of those questions or it's pressed pause on the um, the, the trade decisions um, or it gets chugged along all the way to the end of the, the production line so that I have a green light for the trade to pack it, ship it, and click confirm and send. So some more examples for you to try and help illustrate this. Uh, BTFD, buy the dip. You need to know the trend. You can't just buy a dip. 
you need to know the trends before you can buy a dip. It seems obvious when you say that, but then we can start to layer on. How do we determine the trends and how we're going to qualify the dip? So we need rules in place to say, okay, well, this is a very clear, very distinct uptrend. And as a result, I can start to buy the dip in the context of an uptrend. So then I need to qualify and quantify what a dip is to me. Is it any down day? Is it a down week? Is it a percentage of downward movement? You see where I'm going with this? And I've already done this. And you can go back to the very first episode of this podcast. And you'll hear me describe this in a very specific detail. What exactly am I looking for? So the purpose of this drilling down and getting specific is to, well, drill down and get more specific to the point where you're able to get a yes or no decision. And it can turn uh, those seemingly discretionary choices, the, the, the things that are open to interpretation, you can start to define them to the nth degree so that you can quantify it. It becomes an algorithm. It is, has this criteria happened? If yes, move to the next question, the next question, next question, move it along the production line, and then you have a green light for the trade. Or you get along the production line and you hit a no, so you press pause, or you pop it in the recycling bin. So for me, it might look like is price an uptrend? Yes, I've qualified what I define as a trend. Again, go back to the very first podcast. I explain what I'm looking for. Is price dipping in my ideal zone? Again, I've defined what a dip is in the context of the trend. I've got certain criteria that need to be need to develop. Then I'm looking for a trigger condition. Has that trigger condition also developed? And if yes, I can initially put it into a holding pattern that has me uh, ready to place the trade. And then when all is in place and that entry condition, the trigger has been tripped, then the trade goes live. And then I pack it, ship it, confirm and send. And I can place the trade in that context as defined by the rules that I follow with consistency, with clarity, it's there's no ambiguity involved. And what it means is, is it can be replicated primarily and selfishly for me first. But what it allows uh, a lot of my uh, student traders to do is to be able to replicate their own measure of success. And often we're placing the very same trades when you learn the system. So that's one of the, the beautiful things about rule-based trading or algorithm trading. So, so uh, let me just press pause there. Has your brain melted yet? When you've got absolute clarity on what you're doing, when you're doing, why you're doing it, not just for the entry, but also for the trade management and the exits, you know, what if it doesn't get to targets? How do we manage the trade in the trade? Um, and, you know, if you get a trade, it goes straight to target. That, that's the easy uh, the, the thing. You know, it does what you expect it to do, close the trade. But it's that, how do we manage the trade? And then how do we manage the portfolio? There's all these rules that come together to... Uh, create this positive expectancy over the long term, not just, you know, a dozen trades. You know, I'm 30 years into my career now. You know, it's consistently producing the results over and over again. So what's the trend? Where is price in the context of the trend? I've not I've already gathered I'm predominantly a trend trader. Has price provided an entry in line with the view of the trend? Where could price get to? What's an average expectation of the movement? Again, I'm not looking for moonshots. I just want a move, a typical move for the morning if I'm day trading, a typical move for the week if I'm short-term uh, overnight swing trading, and a typical move for the month if I'm you know, longer-term swing trading. And I go all the way up to the quarter. So I've got all these different time horizons that give me an average expectation of a target. You know, if an average day's move on the S&P is 100 points, which it has been recently, then why am I looking for a 200 point move in a single day? Or if it's already done a 100 point move in the day, why am I trying to participate in a day trading opportunity if the day's already done what it's expected to do on average? Some of these things are so obvious when you point them out, but most people don't even give it a moment's consideration or a moment's thought. And that's what these rules allow you to do. Have we got a, a, an expectation for the day or the week or the month? Or is the day already done? Or is the week already done? Or is the month already done? If it is, why am I trying to flog a dead horse? How are you manage trades? How's the account going to be managed? It's not just the one trade that makes the profits. It's the profit on average. And again, I like to trade a portfolio of strategies, a portfolio of opportunities, a portfolio of time horizons because it allows me this holistic approach that is very simple, very methodical when it's pieced together and you learn a rule-based process. So get specific at 
every decision that you have to make and you will have your own production line trading process. And in fairness, if you need some help with that, give me a call. There's a, a description, uh, sorry, if you go to the, um, uh, the description, you'll see a link, you can send me a message. If you, I'll always point you off in the right direction if what I do is not right for you. But if it is, we can have a longer conversation. It might be exactly what you need and what you're looking for, for your very specific and unique circumstances. Uh, alternatively, if you don't want to speak to me, that's cool. Uh, you can enjoy some of the free training that I've recently held. There will also be a link in the description for that. And it goes through two complete strategies that I use for my day training. Again, the link will be in the description. So just follow that and you'll be taken straight there. So that's it for today. If you like what you've heard, be sure to follow and listen to the very first episode where I map out the first of my six most profitable money-making strategies. And obviously the link is in the description for the visuals that go along with that for a recent webinar that I have completed. Uh, so that's all for the today. Thank you for giving me your time, your attention, and making me a part of your regular routine. Have a wonderful day, and I'll speak to you at the same time next time. Toodaloo Trader, and bye for now. Keep in mind that futures, options on futures, stocks and stock option trading involves a degree of risk that may not be suitable for all investors. Past performance is no guarantee of future performance. Antivesta provides educational information and does not provide financial advice.